All right, uh, welcome to this uh, video where I actually, this is just a supplementary video to some of my other videos where I want to show how uh, we can actually carry out dynamic programming uh, quite easily uh, and simply uh, in a spreadsheet. And the reason I wanted to tackle this is partly because um, of an instinct that a lot of my students sometimes jump into, uh, which is the desire to want to implement a dynamic programming algorithm to see if you can get the right results. Of course, that kind of makes sense. Um, and a lot of my students who are, are Java trained um, then decide, well, why not jump into Java and try and encode it in Java? And, and, and my preference is not for Java. I happen to think Java is a very bulky language. And so it takes a lot of time to implement something in Java. So for instance, uh, in Java, you might want to do the very simplest of dynamic programming algorithms, computing the Fibonacci sequence, which is incredibly easy in a spreadsheet. As you can see here, I do oop, plus, and then I'll do this one. And then I can just cut and well, how many do I want? I'll paste them in. And there you go, pick whichever Fibonacci number you want. I've got them all there. I've computed them quite quickly and easily. And so if you're familiar with the, uh, you know, the job selection problem, so I can quickly just generate some random data here. I don't want that to be changing a lot. So I'm just going to cut it and I'm going to, let's see here, paste special, paste values only. That way they're not generating any random values. So imagine this is an input to a 25 day long job selection problem. How could we solve what the job selection problem was? Now, if you're not familiar with job selection problem, go jump back to my job selection video, but let's do it quickly if you are familiar. Well, in the job selection problem, we need the secondary array. We're gonna make this first case be equal to the one above, okay. And then usually in the second case, in the, in the normal job selection problem, we would make this equal to uh, the maximum of the two above. There's actually an opportunity for us to do two possible things. I like to kind of put a zero over here and saying if I had zero days, I had zero. I didn't have zero up here, but if I have zero days, now I can just go ahead and say, well, what was the job selection? It was the max. So we'll take the max of, and we had two different sub problems. One of them said, well, just take the last instance, the last version of the, this recursive uh, call, which would just be this cell here. And then the other one said that, or take the one that was two back and add it to the payout for today. And that will give us, as we can see here, the 39 is what we should expect the maximum of those two values. Let's just double check. I'm just going to check because you might not believe me yet. If I copy this and paste this here, now what did it do? It took the 39 plus the 24, which is 63, and it compared it to the 39 and it gave us the, the maximum. Well, like I did with the Fibonacci sequence, I can do that. And now I've got my uh, all, all the solution to my job selection problem very quickly in uh, Excel, or in this case, Google Sheets. And as you can see that this type of um, implementation, that this is an implementation of the job selection problem, I didn't write any real code. I, I mean, this is the code that I wrote, okay? Um, and then cut and paste was the other code that I wrote. Okay, so if we un understand this, now why, why am I saying this? This is, might not be useful if you actually have to solve the job selection problem um, regularly. You probably want to write a little bit of code for it. I recommend Python or something simpler than Java, but if all you have is one instance you need to solve right now, say for a quiz or something like that, uh, or a homework solution, you can do it very, very easily in uh, any spreadsheet. So let's maybe try uh, to do some two-dimensional, uh, and maybe I'll just start with something very easy. I did a, a, I did an example called the dungeon escape. So remember, in the dungeon escape problem, and these numbers represented how many goblins there were in each of the rooms. And actually, I'm going to make the room we start out in with zero goblins. That makes a little more sense. And the goal was to fight the minimum number of goblins along the way to get to the escape, which was down here in the bottom right. And of course, we add the extra rule that we're always going to either move to the right 
or move down. That makes it a little bit easier. Otherwise, we're in a uh, Dijkstra's algorithm type problem. And let me again just show you how I might solve this very quickly. This was a 10 by 10. There's 100 things I need to calculate here. But if I do things properly, I'm giving myself a little bit of room here because I know there's going to be out of bounds. And if you go back to my videos, I sometimes talk, well, what happens if we're out of bounds? Well, luckily, spreadsheets are kind of smart about what happens when we're out of bounds. Now, this was our only initialization case for the goblin escape, which was um, our top left corner was just going to be however many goblins were in the top left corner. And I mentioned uh, I'm going to start that as zero to make a little bit of sense. Now, for every room, I'm going to start with this room here. Um, I could have come from the prior room, the one to my left, or I could have come from the room above me. So the way I'm going to handle that here is I'm going to do, well, I've got that selected here. I want to pick the minimum room, the room that has the minimum number of goblins in it, either this one or this one. And then when I get to the room that I'm currently in, I will add in those goblins. Okay, so how many goblins does it take to reach this room? Well, according to my, my math down here, 11. Now the other one I can calculate that has is this one, which is 67, but let's just do this one here. This one should take the minimum of these two, 11 or 67, and then add on the 25. Indeed it did, 11 plus 36. Now again, uh, if I want to do this properly, I can just cut and paste. I've already got the cut, so, well, I want to make sure I get my indices correct here. So we'll go over to here, and then we'll go, uh, that's row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'll do a paste, and I didn't get my first column here, so I'll get this one in here as well. I didn't, oops, what did I do there? I didn't want to paste it into this top cell because that's the, our base case, our, our, um, the, the one that we needed to initialize. All the rest are going to be the same. In fact, if I do paste into that top cell, I think it will do the exact same thing because this is a zero and this is a zero. So, you know, if I paste, it gives me zero. Um, but now, again, if we want to know the minimum number of goblins to reach the exit, it happens to be, well, 637. That sounds like, like a lot. Um, but that's just one way we could solve the dungeon escape problem. I had another uh, a problem that uh, I, I gave to my students as a, a quiz problem called the carnival game. Where I said you could start in the first row. Um, well, whether that's the top or the bottom doesn't really matter. Um, my envisioning was the bottom row, but we can, let's do it for the top. It's going to work a little bit better in this uh, spreadsheet at least. So we can start on any row. We could put down uh, a, a coin or a marker in the row. And then um, uh, in the carnival game, we can move it to the next row, uh, either to the left or the right um, or immediately below. So if we started in this 14 cell, we could end up in the 85, the 4, or the 83. And again, we can traverse our way down, um, trying to make as much money as possible. Um, we always have to go down a row in each step, but we could go down and again straight down to the left or to the right. Now, uh, the goal of course is to maximize, in, in the goblin escape we were trying to minimize, now we're trying to maximize our earnings. Um, in, in my uh, example problem I had negatives in there too, that made it a little bit, you know, uh, more challenging. Uh, this one just says, well, let's go for those big numbers probably, Get, you know, maybe we might want to start on the 100. Well, the way to calculate this um, notice that starting on the 100 it probably is right in this one. It makes sense. It, it looks like better than starting on the 3, uh, for instance. But g given uh, what numbers ended up populating in here, random numbers, um, we could have a case where starting on the 100 actually isn't the best case. So that's why we need to run the dynamic programming. Now let's see how this would work. For this particular problem where I said, okay, we need to start on the first row. Well, what I'm going to have down in my representation below is how much I could earn, the maximum amount I could earn rather, if I ended up in that cell. So in the first row, it's just however much I would get in that cell. So this one here. Okay, again, it, in the whole first row, it's just however much I would earn in that cell. So in this case, I've just copied them all down from the cell above. That's how much I would earn if I started in that cell, basically. Now, what I want to know on my next row is I want to say, okay, I could have come from this cell or this cell or this cell. 
and I want to take the maximum of those. So I'm going to take the maximum of those cells, this one, this one, this one, and I'm going to add to it however much I would make for moving into this cell, which would be 67. And again, I can take that and copy that and paste that from my whole row, and that will tell me how much. Let's just make sure. So if I was in the 100 cell, okay, now if I got to this cell, obviously the best cell I could have come from above would have been the 100, and I would have made 185. Okay, notice we've got 151 here, and we've got 104 here too, because for all of those three, 100 is the best, which makes sense. This was a random number from 1 to 100, so that's the best you could get. Okay, likewise, maybe over here we've got this 79 sticking out, and we see again down here we got 79 plus 83, uh, we got 79 plus 21 gives us 100, 79 plus 34. Okay, so the 79 being the biggest one in that little of the options in that range, these three tend to pick on it uh, to, to increase their value down here. Now, we can scan across here and see that it looks like 185 is our winner, 162 is next, but remember, we don't really know what the best path is until we finish it off. So let's just finish. So let's continue. We're going to, so that's row two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now this is telling us our maximum. How do we know what our maximum possible earnings is? Let's say we wanted to solve this problem. We go across the bottom here, and I see that this is my maximum earnings, the, uh, the 808. So maybe I'll just color that in. Okay, now how do I know how do I get there? That's the, the problem. I, I know I can make 808, but how do I get there? I probably had to start on the 100, right? But how did I get there? Well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go and say, well, which was the maximum of the three above here? This one here, again, which is the maximum of the three here, this one here. And so that one will color. Uh, next maximum. Okay, next maximum. Uh, looks like this one here. Next maximum. Oh, this one here. Okay, next maximum. Looks like. This one, this one, this one, and then the 100 like we thought. So we could track that up and, uh, and paste that up there as well to figure out, well, which cells did I have to move into to get where I was going. Okay, we could do the same thing here if we wanted for the dungeon escape, right, uh, by looking here and just starting here and then moving, which is our maximum next max, and so on. We could continue to recover our solution. So uh, this was just a quick video. I think we could, uh, again, do this for subset sum, or we could do this for um, our uh, edit distance as well, any of them. A lot of the times, uh, because these uh, algorithms, once designed, are very simplistic in their nature, that yes, they're very easy to implement in uh, traditional code, um, but pretty much all the functionality you need to uh, carry out dynamic programming is usually just built right into your local spreadsheet. So um, take your favorite one and uh, do some quick computing. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.